Let's hope they laugh at the first joke. Here he is, Simon B. Cotter. Well, thank you very much, Montreal. Is it? Oh, I cannot believe your city. This, uh, this city, the most gorgeous women in the world. I don't know if you have some sort of local legislation where, like, if a girl turns 13 and she's not gorgeous, she has to be sent to Toronto or something. But... <laughs> I kicked off my European tour in Scotland. Lovely people, the Scottish. Bit of exaggerators, you know. We clone sheep. Sure you did. This sheep looks just like this sheep. <laughs> Trying to find a sheep that doesn't look like another sheep. Probably sell that to the World Science Council. Oh, God, it's Scotland again. <laughs> oh, you've cloned sheep. Oh, I bet you have. How's that monster in the lake coming? <laughs> I got to work in England. English people are very nice, but they are the palest people on the planet. How do you even get a complexion like that? You've got to live in a basement eat chalk. <laughs> and the cops here don't have guns. They have whistles. <laughs> I'm stealing everything. Oh, he's going to blow a whistle. <laughs> oh, don't. I might get a ringing sensation. I'm ripping off a stereo. This guy's hailing me a cab. I got to work in uh, Switzerland. It's a neutral country. How do you pull that off? One of you guys fight. We'll watch. Even worse, it's the world banking capital. Sort of. You guys fight. We'll hold your wallets. Does it matter who wins? You only have to give one back. <laughs> I got to go up to uh, Switzerland, then I went to Sweden. Oh, Sweden, unbelievable how gorgeous the people are. <laughs> they knew I was a tourist. Sweden has the highest rate of suicide of any industrialized nation, yet they go to the trouble of building the Volvo, the world's safest car. I have to drive home very carefully. I'm planning on hanging myself. They're great salespeople, though. They created IKEA furniture. Is that the greatest ripoff store ever? Let's see, I go to your store, I pay you money, I take it home, and I build it myself. They got a new store. You go, you buy a box, you take it home, it's just an axe and a map to a tree. <laughs> I got to work in uh, Germany. I got married four years ago. I married into a German family, so I was curious to see what it was like. It's a very cool culture, but the only thing I knew about the German culture was what I saw in those old black and white World War II films, you know? Not exactly the most positive portrayal. <laughs> My wife's grandfather owns a smoke shop. I like to go in and order loose tobacco just to hear him say, Papas? <laughs> my wife is a feminist. I have a lot of feminist leanings myself, but I had an old-fashioned notion growing up. I'd sort of like my wife to have my name. As soon as she said she was keeping her own name, I didn't argue it. Isn't a single good argument in your favor? Am I property? No. Am I chattel? No. Well, why should I take your identity? <laughs> Give me ten bucks. <laughs> the kids have my name, though. That way kids come up and say, Daddy, why does Mommy have a different last name than us? I say, well, because Mommy doesn't really love us. <laughs> She kept her own name so she can take off any time she wants. <laughs> take a good look, she might not be here tomorrow. <laughs> My wife took me camping out in Banff, you know. It's a, it's a cool place, but you pay your money to go in. Then after they take your money, they give you this pamphlet, this Beware of Bears pamphlet. People, oh, Simon, don't worry, most people don't die from the bears. 
What do most people die from? I go, most people fall off the trails. I go, how wide are these trails? I go, well, great, just wide enough for me and a bear. I go, bears mainly only eat nuts and honey. Of course, this is the one morning I had granola for breakfast. And the woman said, well, she got mad at me because you're a wimp. I'm going to get attacked first. She read the warning they have in the big block red letters. It says this, wimp. Warning, bears attack women twice as frequently as men because bears are attracted to women on their menstrual cycle. <laughs> bears are attracted to women on their menstrual cycle? <laughs> Brave bear. I don't mean that in any sort of sexist way, I truly don't, but I have lived my life, you know. <laughs> Think of 1,000 pound grizzly, 120 pound woman with cramps. <laughs> Pretty much a fair fight, the way I can. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'll put my money on her because I know the bear can't stay mad for five days. <laughs> Speaking of unwinnable arguments, uh, my daughter loves peanut butter. Like, that's her favorite food. But she can't eat it anymore because she started going to nursery school. And the principal said, well, other kids are allergic. I said, oh, fair enough. We would never send any peanut products to school with her. She said, no, she can't eat it at home. I said, why? She said, well, it's in her system. And she could cough at school and get saliva on her hand, turn a doorknob. Another kid might touch that doorknob, put their hand in their mouth, and they could seizure. <laughs> now, I don't mean to sound insensitive, but if your kid can't bring around any other kid that's had peanut butter in the last 48 hours, your kid's not going to make it. <laughs> Better you lose them now before you get too attached. <laughs> I'm Simon B. Carter. Thanks again, Montreal. Good night.